There's never been a campaign of this intensity at such great depth. Zeno, Zeno, Baku on surface. Welcome back. We came here to try and cover at least 10,000 meters of depth range. That's huge. So the Tonga Trench for us is a big one because it's the second deepest trench in the world. It's a very unique place. First of all, we're going to map it. So we'll create a three-dimensional map of the entire trench. And all that is more or less new map. We have free fall cameras called landers that go down. They also have bait on them, so a lot of the mobile animals will come to the lander. No one has ever deployed this many subsea assets at these depths in a short space of time ever. So it'll be massively interesting geologically to see what the seafloor actually looks like. Then we see how biodiversity changes all the way down. Zeno, Baku, clear to dive, pumping in. Yeah, so this is the second deepest place on the planet. Uh, what we found was a desolate environment that had very little signs of life. It's not necessarily a negative result. It's fascinating. Something's changed. So now we're just going to try and dig through it and work out what it is that's changed. I would say this is the deepest scientific dive ever done. We've come away with some incredible images. And the poster child for the trip, this thing here, it's an Octopodidae, but it's never been caught, so it doesn't have a name. It will not be on the record. The big take home, the big win is the volume and quality and quantity of, of data. As a whole, this expedition is focused on mesophotic reefs. Those are the reefs that occur from 150 metres right up into the light-filled shallows. Good to go. We've been able to deploy a range of equipment. We're trying to understand how deep, nutrient-rich water gets moved into the light zone and is available for production for reefs and biodiversity. OK, number 15. We have a specialised piece of equipment on the Inkfish Tender Sky and we've been mapping some of the reefs nearby. Yeah, that's good and keep this line. The mapping is an initial step of a three-leg survey. It shows the other groups how deep is it, how steep is the seafloor. Using the seafloor maps, we identified suitable locations to deploy an autonomous underwater vehicle to conduct large-scale benthic imaging. Within these same areas, ultra-high resolution photogrammetry was carried out by closed-circuit rebreather divers to build three-dimensional models of shallow and mesophotic habitats. Geo-reference coral specimens were then collected to study their species diversity and better understand the environments in which they grow. Yep, good. For the lower parts of the mesophotic reef, we've got the beta remote underwater video surveys. Oh, what's that? There's a huge interest in sort of the fishery species in and around these reefs. These are like a prized Tongan species of fish. We can then link any changes that we're seeing in abundance, fish biomass, even fish behaviour, with the data that's been captured before us. The showstopper comes in. Oh, there he is. Ready? You ready? Three, 
The particular clams that we're focusing on here are an indicator for climate change. We take small tissue samples from them to do the genetic analyses. One of the things that we're really trying to do as a research program is contribute to locations where relatively little is known. So where can we make the greatest impact as a result of the research that we're doing? Number one. This data will be able to be used for a regional understanding of uh, the islands here in Tonga, not just in Hapai, but all of the islands, and put that into a wider context for the change that's happening in the Southwest Pacific and globally around warming oceans.